All right, so in this problem, we are given a vector field uh, f of xy equals p of xy comma q of xy, and we're also given a plane region. And the first uh, requirement of this problem is we're asked to sketch the region uh, and the simple oriented closed curves which comprise dr. And then we're asked to uh, state the equality given by Green's theorem for f, r, and dr. Um, just as a precursor to this problem, don't evaluate the integral. Uh, it's going to be pretty complex at the end here. Um, so the first thing I want to do is uh, sketch our region R. Um, so we have, let me just read off the question here. F equals x to the fifth comma y cubed, and R is the disk inside the circle of radius 4 centered at the origin from which we have removed the disks of radius 1 centered at negative 2 comma 0 and 2 comma 0. So I'm going to go ahead and sketch that region for you guys. Um, so we can see uh, these are both circles of radius 1 centered at 2, 0, negative 2, 0. Um, this is the circle of radius 4. Um, we're also asked to um, sketch the direction, the positive orientation of the curve. Um, the positive orientation of the curve is when our region is to the left of the curve. Um, so as you can see around the outside, as we go around counterclockwise, the region stays to the left. So on the outside, we're going to be counterclockwise. But as we're on the inside, the region goes this way because we want to keep that region to the left. So the direction of these two circles is actually going to be clockwise. So what I've just done is indicated the positive orientation of each curve uh, involved in our region. Um, outside, again, counterclockwise. Inside regions are clockwise. Um, so again, our force field is x to the fifth y cubed. Um, Green's theorem says if we have a conservative, conservative vector field, uh, which is the gradient field for f of x comma y, then the total line integral for the outside region, dr, um, is going to be zero. So we're going to take a look and write that out. Um, we're going to figure out what our whole line integral for this region is going to be. So we're going to take the big curve to be R1 and the little curves to be R2 and R3 in this next part. Okay, so we've uh, evaluated what this whole integral is going to look like, and now what we really need to do for part B is find out if it is conservative. And we know that it's conservative if the curl is equal to zero, and the curl is just um, the, uh, the derivative with respect to y of the x-coordinate plus the derivative with respect to x of the y-coordinate. So it's going to look a little bit like this. I'm actually going to write our field on the board. I've already stated it. It's x to the fifth comma y cubed. I haven't written that on the board yet. Now we're taking the derivative with respect to y of the x-coordinate plus the derivative with respect to x of the y-coordinate. 
and we find out there's no terms of y in here, no terms in x in here, so the curl is indeed zero. So we do have a conservative vector field. Um, so we're going to have that zero is the value for this. Okay, so now that we've found this integral, uh, we can pretty easily evaluate it so we can see that um, the integral of f circle dr over r1, the outside circle, is equal to the integrals of the other two regions combined. So now what we really need to do is uh, parameterize the uh, circle because we're going to look to uh, evaluate these integrals for f and r. So we need to figure out exactly what r is going to be. Um, so our outside circle, it's a circle of radius 4. There's nothing really special about it. Uh, so we can really easily see that r1 of t is going to be just 4 cosine t, 4 sine t. For R2, we'll take this to be R2 and this to be R3. For R2, we actually uh, have a circle of radius 1. Um, so in the uh, the coefficient of cosine and sine in this is going to actually be 1. Um, but we do have a shift, so we want to make sure we are accounting for that. And the same goes for R3. So I'm just going to go ahead and write that. Um, R2 is going to be uh, cosine t minus 2 comma sine t. The other one is going to be cosine t plus 2 sine t. So now what we need to take care of is actually plugging in and finding out what f of r1, f of r2, and f of r3 is so we can take care of, excuse me, so we can take care of the f's here. So I'm going to go ahead and carry that out right down here. So what we're doing here is plugging in 4 cosine t wherever we see an x and for sine t, wherever we see a y. So with our f of r1, you can already see why the problem doesn't ask us to evaluate the integral. This would be an extremely complex integral to calculate. Uh, I'm now just going to do f of r2. So again, plug in cosine t, quantity minus 2, sine for uh, wherever you see an x, and sine t for wherever you see a y. And same goes for R3. So now that we have all of our f's, we can actually plug in to the integral over here. Um, so r1, 
I'm gonna wait one second, take the derivatives before plugging into the integral. Uh, that way we have a little more room to work with that integral on the other board. Um, so R1 prime, it's gonna be derivative of cos, uh, four cosine t, which is just negative four sine t. Derivative of four sine t, four cosine t. R2 prime, uh, it looks like we have a, uh, uh, excuse me, a cosine t minus two. Um, that two is a constant, so it's just gonna drop right out, and the uh, cosine t is gonna become negative sine t. That sine t is gonna be a positive cosine t. And then we can do R3 prime. Um, you can see the similarities between R2 and R3. The only difference is the constant. One is minus two, one is plus two. They have the same derivative. Okay, so uh, we're going to plug all this into the integral just to make sure that you guys know how to plug it in correctly. Obviously, we're not going to calculate uh, an integral that involves anything with cosine of the fifth, sine cubed, all this crazy stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and go over to the other board and evaluate this all out. So the first, oh, I can't get it. Uh, the first thing we have is um, f circle dr over r1. So this is our f of r1, and then we're going to circle that with uh, r1 prime. Okay, so uh, if you take the dot product here, um, and feel free to do so if you want to, but uh, it's not necessarily required, um, this is good enough for your final answer. Um, if you do do the dot product, you're going to have 4 to the 5th cosine of the 5th t times negative 4 sine t plus 4 cubed sine t times 4 cosine t. Um, and so since we have this, this is r1, uh, we can change up. This is equal to the integrals over r2 and r3, so we're just going to set this equal. So now we need over r2 and... Again, we're going to have f with dr. Um, so we have f is equal to negative 2 plus cosine t to the fifth. And that's a whole quantity to the fifth with sine cubed t. And uh, R2 prime was just negative sine t cosine t. So again, you can take the dot product if you want to. You're going to have negative 2 cosine t quantity to the fifth times negative sine t plus sine cubed t cosine t. But again, this is okay for your answer. Um, and now all we need to do is add R2 and R3 together. Uh, R3, very similar to R2. Uh, instead of negative 2 plus cosine t, we have a positive 2 plus cosine t. And we're also still left with that sine cubed t. And like I said uh, a couple minutes ago, um, the, uh, the derivative of R1 and R2 was actually the same. 
or excuse me, R2 and R3 was the same, not R1. So now that we've uh, plugged in for this entire integral, we can actually leave this as our final answer. So it's over R1, we're going to have 4 to the 5th cosine of the 5th t dot negative 4 sine t, uh, excuse me, 4 to the 5th cosine of the 5th t comma 4 to the 3rd sine cubed t dot uh, negative 4 sine t comma 4 cosine t. Uh, and then we're going to add all of this on these two regions, very similar as we saw in our original diagram. But this is our final answer for the value of that integral.